there's been a lot of discussion as to whether or not Headhunter is dead in 318. And I feel some of these conversations have jumped to some conclusions which we don't have enough supporting evidence for. At least, not yet. Headhunter is one of the most iconic items in Path of Exile. It's long represented the endgame chase for many players. So I don't think that grinding your games, and I don't think that Chris Wilson, would simply remove it from relevancy with no fanfare. If Headhunter was going to be removed from PoE, it would be front and center, especially given that some of the past nerfs to Headhunter have been very controversial. So let's dive into the changes that will be affecting Headhunter. Some of the speculation, what I think will ultimately end up happening, and where to go from here. Because it's true that Headhunter may be dead. But more likely, the rumors of its demise are a bit premature. In Path of Exile 318 Sentinel, rare monster modifiers have been reworked to incorporate the Arch Nemesis system. This means it's going to be a lot easier to identify rare monsters at a glance, know what they do, and know how they're dangerous to you. Chris said that magic monsters will now typically have one modifier, and I'm going to guess that that modifier is taken from the minion version of the Arch Nemesis pool, whereas rare monsters will have two modifiers, and that's going to be taken from the full version of the Arch Nemesis pool. Although in the Q&A, he also clarified that the multiplicative health bonus for stacking Arch Nemesis modifiers will not apply to these rares, as they will have two of them, and their base health will be largely unchanged versus right now. Chris also confirmed that when these modifiers are stolen, such as by Inspired Learning or Headhunter, they won't stack. And so, a lot of people fear this is a major nerf to Headhunter. But what are these new monster modifiers? Well, we can certainly speculate on what they do, based on what they do for Arch Nemesis. For example, Malediction will probably give you an aura that causes things around you to deal reduced damage and take increased damage. Will this be 50% like it is currently on Arch Nemesis, or will it be closer to 10% like we've seen for the Malediction effect that players have access to. Well, right now, that's completely unknown. And this is where the devil truly is in the details. Because if it's 50%, that's a very significant and very powerful buff. Whereas if it's 10%, I can see why people using a Headhunter might have some concerns. If the modifiers go unchanged from their Arch Nemesis form, then rare monsters are going to be pretty dangerous. Certain ones such as Malediction and Droughtbringer are going to be especially lethal. This is because individual modifiers will be more powerful, they'll have at least two, and if there's multiple rares together, you might end up taking 50% increased damage, and then having all your charges and flasks stripped away, and that would lead to a very bad time. Something else to keep in mind is, a lot of the speed that you get from using Headhunter comes explicitly from the Soul Eater modifier. Some is Haste Aura, some is other things, I know people can argue the specifics back and forth. When you're killing dozens, if not hundreds of monsters in rapid succession, then Soul Eater is going to be a lot of a move speed and a lot of the attack speed that you get. And since this is already incorporated into an Arch Nemesis monster, it's probably going to stay in the mod pool, so don't worry about that going away. Now, I'm going to talk about what this means for Headhunter, what this means for Inspired Learning, and a little bit on what it means for Replica Headhunter. But before I do, if you've been enjoying the video, then please do leave a like, as it really helps out to show the YouTube algorithm to recommend this video to other people, especially people who are concerned about Headhunter being nerfed. If you want to see more Path of Exile content, or you're curious what I'm leak starting, then sub to the channel and keep your eye out because I'm going to be uploading a video on that in the near future. And finally, if you play games outside of Path of Exile, and you want to keep up with general gaming news, game reviews, and much more, then check out my second channel, 10 Gaming Thoughts, where I plan to release some interesting topics over the next few weeks, including a look back at the game Dishonored. To answer the question, was it good? A link to that will be down in the description below. So, now that I've talked about the upcoming changes to rare monsters, what does this mean for Headhunter? First off, let's start by assuming that the individual monster modifiers are more powerful than they are currently. I feel this is a very reasonable assumption, as rares currently have about a half dozen, and they're going to have an average of two going forward. So, your Headhunter will still ramp up very quickly. In fact, it might even ramp up faster than before. Which means, for content with a finite limit, and a high density of rare monsters, such as a 100% Delirious Beyond map, it doesn't matter how much damage your Headhunter does, or how hard your Headhunter ramps. It matters if you can ramp to the point where you exceed monster health pools and defenses very quickly. And in this regard, I expect Headhunter to see minimal nerfs, or possibly even slight overall buffs, as it may now ramp up to that point a little bit faster. 
And remember, a lot of the speed that you're used to, both in terms of attack speed and move speed, is from Soul Eater, and that, as far as we know, is totally unchanged. However, this might also mean there's less of a reason to use Headhunter, especially in these high-density situations, will you be able to steal all the mods you need with two Inspired Learnings? If so, this is going to free up your belt slot to add resists, life, damage, rampage, or even a mage blood for permanent flasks. Alternatively, if you're using Headhunter, you no longer need Inspired Learning. You're going to steal every mod anyway, and they don't stack. So maybe you'll have some quad crit multi-jewels, which will add a significant amount of damage. Where I do think this could limit Headhunter's top-end potential is a situation like the domain of Relentless Conflict, where enemies continue to scale, and so as you get closer to unlimited scale potential, your buffs just might not be strong enough anymore. But will it actually matter? Will enough monsters spawn? To the point where you feel like the amount of loot that you get is limited in some way. Or after the scaling from your aura bot, since usually Relentless Conflict is done in a group, will it not really matter? I expect at the very top end, the people who are getting the most stacks will feel a little bit of a reduction here, but I think the content will still be very doable and very profitable. However, I'm not 100% sure. We'll know more once GGG releases a full list of the modifiers and how they work, but I do feel fairly comfortable in saying the playstyle of blasting maps will remain, and not needing to stack both Inspired Learnings and a Headhunter means that builds which previously did this will get either jewels or a belt slot. So they'll be able to take some of the power they lost and make up for it in that way. One other item that may have gotten significant buffs is the Replica Headhunter. Replica Headhunter steals mods from magic monsters. And since magic monsters come in a large pack, you'll probably get the mods from every pack you kill. These mods in general are probably going to be more powerful than they have been in the past. I don't know if these will stack with the Headhunter version or if it's exclusive but I do think that Replica Headhunter will be quite a bit better than it used to be as a result of these changes. Will it be good? Probably not, but if it's cheap enough, it could be worth using. Remember, individual mods on rares will be more powerful, so they're also going to be more powerful when stolen. So the normal uses, such as beyond stacking in Delirious maps, there's a good chance that Headhunter will be the same or feel similarly to what it did recently. I know Headhunter's Dead makes for a great video title. It's super clickable, and that's probably why a lot of you are here. But is Headhunter really dead? Probably not. You'll steal less modifiers, and they'll no longer stack, but the individual modifiers are more powerful. You still get Soul Eater, so it's going to feel very fast. At least, as long as you have enough stuff around you to still kill. Which means, as long as the new modifiers can consistently overcome enemy HP and defenses, it should feel very close to how it did before, possibly even a little better due to faster ramp time. I don't expect that GGG killed Headhunter without really telling anyone especially not in a league where they said there are no major nerfs or no major balance changes. Most likely, the difference is we're operating with incomplete information and they're operating with complete information, having fully tested how Headhunter functioned before and how it functions after. But what do you think? Is Headhunter dead or is this going to be a whole lot of nothing? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And a quick reminder that no, GGG does not hate their player base. No, they do not go out of their way to make players miserable. And no, you cannot hate on GGG in my comments. If you have a reasonable criticism, that's totally fine. But if I see any comments such as Chris Wilson is evil and just likes to torture players, well, in that case, I'll be introducing you to my little friend, The Hammer. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to put them down in the comments below, or join the Discord where you can ask questions, get build help, and hang out with the community. A special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members. They're awesome, and they get to show it by having their name on screen in the credits of all my videos. So if you want to see your name here, be sure to check the link in the description. For more general gaming content, check out my second channel, 10 Gaming Thoughts, and if you want a water bottle or a cool shirt, I have a link to my official merch shop in the description. I hope you learned something today, and I hope to see you again sometime soon.